Hi everyone, Ufufufu FM Mutwe Me Emini Mibumo Sas, the greatest swordsman in South Africa here. And today we are going to be talking about Yasuke. Yasuke is a 2021 six episode Netflix exclusive anime taking place in historic feudal Japan around the 1574 to 1594 meant to be a historic telling of Japan's most famous and most mysterious black samurai Yasuke. Strangely enough, I noticed that Neo Yokio and Yasuke are both six episode animes with black main characters. I don't know if that's intentional, I don't know why they're so short. Like, Neo Yokio definitely deserved being six episodes. That shit was trash. I, I could not stomach that shit. Uh, check out the video here just to understand the context. But instead of me pulling out the race card, let's actually get into this video. This anime had so much potential to be the next Afro Samurai, the next Samurai Champloo, the next representation of people of color in anime and I'm not talking about the Jaden Smith anime again context anyways this anime had so much potential to be the next cultural banger the next hood classic if I may say and yet it fell flat on his face despite Yasuke quite literally being the afro samurai I mean if you replace afro with dreads but dreaded samurai doesn't sound like it slaps as hard well, when Yasuke was announced, a lot of people are hyped for this anime, especially because it's a historic anime about a black samurai who actually lived. So, this would have been Netflix's way of spreading awareness, especially because this anime came fresh out of the Black Lives Matter uh, protests that happened just a year before. With that in mind, it would really be hard to fuck up a historic anime. Or so you think. People only watched episode 1, were so underwhelmed, and then nobody talked about the anime at all. And to my disappointment, I mean, I can kind of see why. The voice acting in this anime is actually very decent. Nothing that actually stands out from the crowd because most of the men in the anime go by that whole, oh, I speak of the Japanese, so my voice has to be deep. Oh, 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 they have that type of accent, which is cool at first when you first like listen to it. But as you go forth, everybody ends up sounding like an NPC character that you'd find in like Sekiro or Ghost of Tsushima. Although my biggest gripe with the anime is that because it's a multicultural, a multicultural anime where we have black people, we have Russians, we have English people, we have Japanese. That since it's a multicultural anime, there are often times where the subtitles will ind indicate the language in which the character is speaking. For example, they will speak in Japanese and then the subtitles will say in English and then this is what they say so what I would have wanted the anime to do is have voice actors be bilingual right or somehow are able to switch things up in terms of their voice for example like when Yasuke's voice actor speaks in English she speaks in English instead of saying instead of speaking in Japanese with English subtitles that say in English this is what he's saying like it would have been very interesting to see the transition because it felt very out of place where there's one scene where another black person sees Yasuke Yasuke speaks in Japanese the black person is surprised like you speak Japanese but he says it in English it's, it, it, he says it in Japanese, but subtitles say he says it in English. It's a very weird conversation thing that goes on. And I really would have appreciated if most of these voice actors that had the role where they would speak two different languages or more, I would have appreciated if they actually hired voice actors like that. It would have been going the extra mile. But unfortunately, Netflix is not like that. They weren't going to do that anyways. But again, really would have been nice to see. So the OST, I fucking enjoy. I really enjoyed the, uh, the OST. It's definitely above average uh, it has this very strong ancient Japanese lo-fi hip-hop feeling which also gives me something reminiscent of Samurai Champloo's departure or impressions by Nujabis rest in peace meaning had this anime gone on for longer than six episodes I would have definitely considered putting Yasuke in my top 10 favorite anime OSTs of all time the composer for these OSTs is Flying Lotus and he really knows how to give this perfect atmosphere with these OSTs 
OSTs, which actually made me not only check out the album, the Yasuke OST album, but it also made me check out Flying Lotus's entire discography. That's how much I enjoyed it. The opening and the ending are also by Flying Lotus, and they're both enjoyable. The opening, called Black Gold, is very calm-hearted, and it feels fitting that this is the song for the opening because when you listen to the song it's very calm it's like soul satisfying but then when you look at the visuals it kind of represents the distortion that's going on in Yasuke's mind so it's like Yasuke's heart versus his mind in an opening and then the ending is also enjoyable also by Flying Lotus is called Between Memories and it tries to drive home this whole New Jabi's feeling like whenever I listen to it I always feel like I'm listening to something that New Jabi's has made and maybe that's the influence of new jobbies on just black anime except for again neo yokio but <laughs> I just really loved it. It was it had such a strong samurai champloo music design as if that's where the inspiration was coming from. I am the storm that is approaching, provoking, back in isolation. The art style is very good. I like it. It's very soft on the eyes, it's very mature. The animation is also pretty solid. It's made by Mappa Studios. So the stuff is probably half dead already trying to make this anime as good as possible, and they didn't disappoint. The anime has a lot of like screenshotable backgrounds, not to mention Saki's mom is bad as fuck, not to mention the big Russian demi-human mommy, god damn, like the women in this anime are fine as fuck, they're fine, the character designs are really enjoyable and unique, but back to the big Russian demi-human mommy, like really, you just had to make her be able to turn into a bear that has a taste for vodka. Really? You just had to throw the Russian bear vodka stereotype in our face like that. All she was missing is Adidas and you'd be set. Quite honestly. All she's missing is Adidas and squatting. Aside from that, Ranmaru is a very beautiful looking man. You barely see him in the series, but he's a very attractive looking man. Uh, he's a fine specimen. No homo. Seeing the way uh, Yasuke has like a Bruce, Bruce Lee type of hopping when he does boxing it's really enjoyable when i saw that shit in the first episode it was so cold it was like oh okay and what made it even better was the ost that was playing in the background the animation really knows how to accompany the osts because again watching yasuke fight with an electric hip-hop lo-fi type of beat in the background that that was a fire scene that was a purely fire scene this anime has a lot of good fighting scenes now as for the scene CGI. Most of the CGI blends in pretty smoothly, but other times you can kind of tell that they're CGI, like they're very stiff, they move very slowly, and it's, it's to the point where it's a visual turnoff. And the reason being is that the CGI looks so polished in compared to its background. So it literally stands out. It looks like it has a, uh, a paint of gloss. A paint of gloss. A gloss. A fresh coat of gloss paint. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> That's that's the word I was looking for. But honestly, with that CGI, I wish they used similar CGI to, for example, Jojo's Bizarre Adventure Part 3 openings. Those openings had really good CGI. If only Yasuke's CGI for their mechas managed to do the exact same thing. And yes, I said mechas. I'm gonna get into that right now. <laughs> The plot fails itself in the very beginning. This is an anime that's supposed to be about feudal Japan in the 14th century, but within the first one minute, I kid you, not even the first five minutes, the first one minute, we see mechas running around. For the most part, I would have ignored this and just said, creative freedom, you know? It's not my business, I'm not gonna put the expectation of a historically accurate anime onto you. However, if you wanna be futuristic, then at least be consistent about it. Because you can't have mechas be the only technological advancements in the entire world, and then everything else is still wood. You have flying mechas that can transform and have like artificial intelligence, but everything else is still wooden. You're still driving with wooden boats and all of that stuff. It's very inconsistent, and that's something I really had a gripe with. You literally have mechas and magic. The concept of mechas and magic is not a bad concept at all. Don't get me wrong, it sounds good on paper, but it doesn't work with an anime like this, especially 
because the way Netflix kind of advertised it was, oh, we're making an anime about the first ever black samurai in Japan. So if you're going to start off with like that racial first foot and then everybody is like, okay, this is gonna be a historic anime. Then you throw mechas in it. <laughs> Bro, where did this come from? This anime has mechas, it has magic, it has mutants, and it has like this Jesus girl, which feels very misplaced. In fact, the plot would have been so much better if you only had kept it with magic and the Jesus girl, because the mutants, uh, I wasn't really feeling it. You know, um, while I did like the the, the, the tall Russian demi-human mommy, I didn't really fuck with the idea of like mutants. If you just wanted to do like magic and, and historic Japan, perfectly fine. The mutants and the mechas felt out of place. It felt like X-Men met Japan. It was very weird. Um, the, pl the actual plot itself, Gives me something reminiscent of From Software's Sekiro Shadows Die Twice, which is my favorite game. Now, the whole premise of protect the supernatural child on a journey really does well to create a bonding for both the main character and the character who's under protection. It really allows you to attach to a character and be somewhat inspired by the lengths that the main character will take in order to be loyal to whoever they're trying to protect. Yasuke is as loyal as a samurai will come. Whenever you think of like honor, Yasuke is now going to start pop popping up into mind. It's to the point where whenever Yasuke sees somebody that he cares about suffering it's so damaging that it actually gives him PTSD you know, Yasuke's personality is very calm it's like it reminds me again like a defeated Sekiro in the beginning of the game to the point where he would allow himself to get robbed in order to avoid any conflict even though he could easily defeat them and just keep all of his belongings now he's just like if you want to rob me rob me I really don't care I, I don't want to fight that's how defeated he is his defeated soul has kind of forced him to take a pacifist route and it's to the point where he said this one quote which really sticks with me a true warrior above all else prays for peace not war it really shows how tired he is of conflict and how much he wants to find peace within himself and kind of get rid of that PTSD that has caused him to become an alcoholic and then like Sekiro later on once he has someone to actually fight for they regain their vigor in fact this anime is so similar to Sekiro let me draw a direct comparison protective fails to protect. Due to that, they're defeated and without the will to live. They're given a second chance to fight once more. They're given a magical child to protect because this child has like super extraordinary abilities, practically the Jesus of their universe or the God of the universe. And then they have to fight a main villain who's trying to obtain immortality through the power of that magical child. And it's set in feudal Japan and there are ninjas and samurais. This is basically Sekiro with a black main character. But despite that, what I do love about this anime, despite all its flaws, mechas, I, I find it fascinating when they explore the bizarreness of a black person living in Japan because Yasuke quite literally stands out. When people see him, it's more awe than tension. I mean, there is surely racism there, but it feels as if the racism is more because he is a former slave rather than because he's black. I mean, they, they kind of do discriminate and like, oh, you're a black swordsman, we don't fuck with you. But it's more like, you were once a slave, that's why I don't like you. It's not, oh, the color of your skin is the reason why I don't like you. No. It's not like that. It's very odd. I, I really enjoy the way they engage with the fact. It's, it's like that one meme where they're just pointing at the background. Like, Ooh, black man. You know, <laughs> that that's the type of energy you get whenever you see somebody interacting with Yasuke or another black person in the series because there's only like two black people in the in the show. It, it's, it's fascinating to see people look at Yasuke and be so surprised like, oh, what? People can actually be born like this? They can be born like this? Like, it, it's very fascinating, right? The the funniest part for me was the first time they saw his black skin and they were like, wash the boy, he's dirty. Then they try and wash him and they're like, why is he not clean? And they even ask him, did you ink your skin black? They were so shocked that people could be born with black skin. That was by far one of my favorite parts, followed by when Yasuke actually introduced himself using his African name, which is John C. <laughs> Eusebio Ibrahimo Baloy. The way it left everyone confused. It had the exact same energy as that video of like the longest name in Africa, the Ufufufuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuefuef
Anyways, shout out, <laughs> shout out to my friend who actually has the same surname as, as Yasuke. Shout out to you, Baloy. Once Yasuke tells everybody his name, it's then revealed that he's part of the Yao tribe or the Yao people who are culturally strong Malawians and Tanzanians from the Middle East. And they actually play a huge part in Southern Eastern African history to the point that their influence in black culture is still significant today. It's to the point that even black people who live in America and have no cultural identity or who have lost their cultural identity still participate in some of their practices. For instance, my black brothers and sisters, you know whenever you use fermented rice water in order to help with your hair growth and in order to make your hair grow faster and stronger? Now you know where it came from. And to be honest, I did not know that until I had to do research for this video. But this anime has a habit of flip-flopping between the present and 20 years in the past in order to give us some backstory, uh, which is not bad because the transitions between the past and the present are actually very smooth. It's, it has like this very grayscale thing and then it slowly like pans into color. And that's like an indication that we've just been thrown into a flashback. If you're not paying attention, it's going to catch you off guard and you're going to be like, what is going on now? But when you're actually paying attention and you see that, it's very interesting. Although my question for the creators of the show is in the first episode, they kind of planted a seed that Ranmaru, the, the very handsome person I was talking about, they said, Ran, they kind of implied that Ranmaru was going to be a very important figure in the series but then later on he's never mentioned we never see him again and it seems as if he was misplaced like quite honestly he had no reason to be in the show and i can bet my left nut on this no not my left nut i'll bet my right nut on this that the only reason why they added ranmaru was to kind of hint towards the feudal lord at the time being part of a gay relationship with Ranmaru. That's the only reason why I think Ranmaru was actually placed in the show because he adds absolutely zero to the plot. He's just there. He's mentioned, oh, I took him to safety. You never see him again. So he was just there to, to imply, oh, the feudal lord is gay. And then they move on with it. This anime really had potential to shine light on an actual historic figure who most people didn't know about. I didn't know about Yasuke. Everybody I talked to didn't know about Yasuke until they heard about Netflix releasing an anime about the first ever black samurai in Japanese history, in recorded history. I, I get Yasuke's story is not complete since again, he's one of the most mysterious African slaves turned samurai in Japanese history. However, even if that's the case, I'm sure you could have done a bit more to flesh out the story and make it more interesting without being Trigger Studios where you find a need to add mechas and or aliens. I mean, they didn't add aliens, but they added weird something that you'd think is an alien. Also, I feel like it was bandwagoning on like the political wokeness again when I said it came not that long after the Black Lives Matter protest and movement ended. So it felt like Netflix placed it there for political wokeness points, but then it felt very odd because it's like, yay, black anime main character, woohoo, and yet you put a vodka loving Russian bear lady in there. It's like something, something feels off there. And if you want to be woke, do it right. The timing was, it was too convenient for me to think that Yasuke wasn't planned by Netflix at that point. Now that, that said, I do believe the biggest reason why this anime failed was due to the whole bitching aspect that Netflix is known for. For better context, I'll let MadPat from Game Theory explain what I'm talking about. It's costing them. I know, I know, you love binging shows, but what if I told you that you weren't actually liking the experience more? A study done on University of Melbourne students looked at the impact of watching shows, an episode a week, an episode a day, or binged all at once. They found that when binging, you may have a better recollection of individual facts and details linking the episodes, but your overall enjoyment of those episodes decreases. Here's the graph of enjoyment levels. Once a day is at the top there, the highest levels of enjoyment. The blue line on the bottom represents the group that binged watch the show. Clearly binge watching is lowering your overall enjoyment. One episode a week right there in the middle a little bit more standard and it's still significantly more enjoyable but why would that be? Well for one thing it makes the content feel less disposable. Binging is just that. It feels like junk food. You consume it fast and then you move on. There's no chance to savor something. Compare that to having to wait a week between uploads. One professor associated with the study theorized that there's something of a Christmas morning effect when you have to wait to open your presents. If you're just watching shows in an endless loop you only activate certain reward centers in your brain. Watching a show releases opiates and cannabinoids that make your brain feel good and tell you to do it again but opiates and cannabinoids don't represent the entirety of positive hormones in your brain. Anticipatory chemicals such as dopamine get you excited for things to come. Without those reactions,
reactions, the binge watchers miss out on a large portion of the viewing experience. They don't get time to consider the possible twists, the lingering mysteries, fantasize about possible endings. And while the study doesn't consider this, the bingers in a real world scenario would be missing out on all the social interactions with their friends. They're cutting out your earned media potential at the knees. Yasuke being a 25 minute maximum episode for six episodes really did make this anime feel like you were just binging fast food. You indulge, you move on, you forget. And that's exactly what happened to Yasuke. Some people indulged and everybody forgot. If they had to increase the episode count and kind of like spread it out weekly, it would have done so much more for this anime. I also feel like Netflix really failed to promote this anime. Outside some Twitter posts here and there, they didn't really get nearly, um, they didn't really promote this anime much. It didn't get as much promotion as, for example, Bubble, which is an anime I also reviewed, which you can check out, shameless plug. It's to the point where whenever I search up Yasuke, I don't find anything on Twitter, and the only thing I can actually find on on Yasuke is people talking about Flying Lotus's album because he's the one that produced the OST for it. So outside fans of Flying Lotus, no one talks about Yasuke at all. Netflix didn't promote it and when they did, it felt very politically woke. Also, the binging aspect just made it incredibly forgetful. The episode count was so short. Again, it's just fast food. You just <laughs> and leave. Uh, in conclusion, Yasuke has an amazing OST. It had a potential to be one of my, one of the best, in my opinion. Not even just one of my favorite, one of the best. It has great animation, it has somewhat uh, average to above average plot. However, the good outweighs the bad, and I would like, I would have liked to see the story fleshed out a bit more than just six 25 minute episodes. And I would actually recommend that you check this out, because I don't think me talking and saying all of this could actually really do justice for how underrated I feel this anime is. I really think it's underrated, despite the rating I'm going to give it. And at the end of the day, the real reason why this anime died in popularity was because of Netflix. Not the plot, not any other factor aside from Netflix and their business practices. In fact, the fact that they're killing JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Stone Ocean or Part 6 shows Netflix is not really good with handling anime, except for like Castlevania. But aside from that, Netflix is the reason why this anime tanked. But overall, I'm still feeling a very strong 7. If you like what you saw, like, comment what areas you disagree with or what areas you agree with. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so that you can be updated next time I post because I try to, I'm trying to post every Wednesday and Saturday. Uh, that said, this has been signing out. Bye. Mm. Ah, fuck. What the? Mm. Mm, toothpaste and, 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 and Marchies do not go together. Doesn't matter. Judgment cut. <laughs> uh, force it. Ah. Ow. Ah, shit, I hurt my toe with that one. Fuck. Oh, D. Can I, like, can I twerk with this? Can I? And I can, you know. Anyways, <laughs> cut. Yasuke is the, uh, the cut. <laughs>